What is going on everyone? Welcome back to a brand new video. Today we could be starting a new possible series. This is Hearts of Iron 4. Um, the guys over at Paradox were kind enough to send me a key for me to do content on. So if you do want to see more of this, let me know in the comment section. Also, let me know by hitting the like button. Maybe um, tweeting it to me on Twitter or something like that if you want me to uh to continue doing this so anyway we're gonna start off with the uk today now i've never really done well right i recorded this before right i've recorded this episode this part before but the audio messed up it wasn't recording my microphone the game audio in the background just like was non-existent um there was like little bits here and there but it just i don't know my like recording program just blew up or something i'm not quite sure um but either way we're gonna be getting back into it today so the 1st of January, 1936, if you don't know what this is, it's like a World War II military type uh, st uh, grand strategy game. Um, it's a lot of fun. I've put about four hours into it. I've got five hours on record, put about four hours into it, because about an hour or so is actually just AFK time. Um, so, yeah, I don't really know too much about this game. I, I normally just play as Germany, just because it's Germany, you can do whatever the hell you want and just pick a war on anyone you want. Um, so I went ahead and done that, but we're going to be starting with the UK today, um, because it seems quite fitting me being English and all. So we're going to select the scenario, um, going to click the UK with Democratic, um, the election's in November 1939. Uh, right, so that, this basically gives us like different perks and things like that. So with Germany, for example, you'd uh, be able to create factions, you'd have more planning speed, division organisation. Um, and you can also send volunteer forces to, to help out and whatnot and and uh, like help out with allies is allies is, is uh, wars and stuff like that so there is loads of different selections these aren't the only countries that you can select you can select every country uh, every country there is you can be um, Iran you can be uh, the Philippines down here you could be Japan you could be China Soviet Union you can even be Germany itself Poland the UK Denmark uh, Canada um, the US Brazil you can be anyone you want right so it's not limited to just a one single thing um, which is pretty great so we're gonna select the scenario I'm gonna go into the UK like I said I have recorded this episode before um, and the audio messed up, so I've gonna ha I'm gonna have to record it again. It won't really be a long episode. This is just gonna be setting things up, getting things going. So let's get into it. Hopefully we can um, we can do pretty well and uh, move on and uh, go pretty fast, get things going pretty quickly, and we'll go from there. All right, guys. So we have loaded in the loading screens at the beginning. Might have been the reason why my audio messed up. So I just paused it and went um, and basically cut out that part just to make sure that hopefully this one will actually work and if you're seeing it it did so congrats congrats mate wait, wait, crap, crap. Um, but anyway you can see these are the forces that we start off with in in the uk got quite a few um different actual forces i'm quite glad we got with the uk we have a really good navy um so i've never really touched on navy i don't think i've even used it before germany don't really have a navy um and if they do it's like non-existent so it just it sucks, uh, but compared to to ours, ours is actually quite good. So we have 259k army. Our air is 31.52k, and our navy is 166k. So it's quite good, um, nearly as good as our ground-based inventory. So I'm happy with that. But we also do own some land over here, um, quite a bit. That I'm not really too sure what to do with, um, and. This is our puppet country as well. I'm not quite sure what that means. Uh, like I said, I, I've never really, really played too much of this game. Um, unfortunately, I never really played the the other Hearts of Iron games, but I'm glad that I've come in at this one because this one is a lot of fun from what I've played. Um, so we will hopefully continue with this. But one more thing I do want to stress. If you do want to see more of this, let me know in the comment section um, or by giving the video a thumbs up. And uh, I can bring it as an actual series. But... So, we're in it, right? We're in the game. The first things we want to do is get set up. So, you can see these icons up the top here. Um, we're going to need to get some research going. We have four slots, which is quite a bit. We also have minus 12% research time, which is quite good. Um, which means it's going to be 12% faster to research things. Now, the first things I always go for are these things over here, which is engineering and industry. right? Now, these things give off quite a, quite a few good things to get started with. So, you have basic machine tools. 
um, which increases your production efficiency cap, which is always good. So you want to research that. Um, this is what I usually do when I start a game anyway. Um, construction 1, which also increases your construction speed by 10%. So that's that's always good. Uh, improved methods and materials allow us to construct buildings by civilian and military faster. So it just makes things uh, build faster, basically. So that's always good. And then I go over to the engineering tab. And normally I click this one, um, which increases the research time by 2%. But as the UK, we already have researched this as well as the radio and radio detection. So we don't have to worry about this as it's already done. So instead, I'm going to go for mechanical computing, which increases the research time by a further 3%, which is good. So we're going to go ahead and research that. And the final one is really up to us. Now, it really depends on what we want to do. Um, in the last one, I, I continue going for like the, the Navy. Um, but in this one, I might go for increasing the tanks because the tanks could be pretty good oh also this is a mod these colored buttons up here will be grayed out for you it's just a mod on a steam workshop which you can just download and install um so i've gone for that it kind of looks it looks nice all right it's just it doesn't really affect the gameplay at all it just changes the color of these so that's it um but yeah uh so what else what do we want to do i'm thinking possibly going in and doing some sort of new tank uh, the Vickers tank, we've got the Matilda tank. Now these things, if you see, it says technology is three years ahead of time. So if you was to do something that is ahead of time, um, if you was to research something that is ahead of time, it would actually be, uh, like it says, the more ahead it is, the bigger the time penalty. So you can see that it's it will take 790 days to research that. So that's what, that's over two years, two and a half years to research that one tank, which is quite a long time. So I'm not going to be doing that. Obviously, I can't anyway because I haven't researched any of these. But I, I will avoid trying to do that because it just adds research time that is unnecessary. So I'd rather research something that's going to be done pretty quickly. Unless it's like 0 0.1 year like ahead of time, like a, a couple months ahead of time. Then it's not really that big of a deal because it's like by 10 days or something like that. So I will do stuff like that. It depends if we really, really need it. Then I have no choice, you know. But... Anyway, I'm thinking, because I did go for, in the last one, we were going to go for some Navy. We were going to go for, like, King George V, uh, King George V, King George V, uh, the, the, his class of, of battleship. And there's loads down here. But instead, our Navy's already really, really good. And pretty much, well, it's not, I don't think it's better than everyone else's, but I'd say it's, it's up there with, with probably the best um, or, or thereabouts. So I don't really think we need to, to continue increasing that for the minute and our air force isn't great but it's pretty decent i think it's still better than germany's i could be wrong um so it's still pretty good and we could uh research any of these but i'm going to avoid doing that so we're going to go for tanks i think and it really depends so the defense is six on this one let's push this over here so six on this one breakthrough is 36 that's 36 Hardness is 70, that's 90. Soft attack is 12, that's 14. Hard attack is 12, that's 1. Damn. Max speed, that's 5, so it's a lot slower. Armor, that's 70, that's 15. Piercing is 30, that's 35. Reliability is 80%, and production cost is 25, that's 80% and 9. Right, so this one seems like it's more of the, the tanky tank. Does that make sense? No, it doesn't, it doesn't actually make sense at all. Basically, by that I mean it's it's more of like a defensive tank, whereas this is more of like an agile. Yeah, light tanks are small, agile tanks which are available to both scout um, and fight a lightly armored opponent. So this one would be like large, yeah, yeah, large armored monsters which are uh, designed to destroy enemy tanks and fortifications. So this one's going to be like a god in terms of defense. Um, it's still got quite good attack as well. It's not like it's terrible. It's just a lot slower. Um, but it's got a hell of a lot more armor, like 70 armor compared to 15. So we're going to go for this, I think. We're going to research that. And that is our research, uh, re research? That is our research done. So 132 days for that, 176 days for construction, 220 days for mechanical computing, and 176 days for Vickers A1E1 indep uh, independent tank. So it's going to take a while for us to do all of that. Now, we have a few more things up the top here. Um, one of which is being free civilian factories. Now, civilian factories are basically used for trading. So, if I go into the trade menu, 
you can see that I have like a specific amount of materials and things and these things are used for when you build planes, ships, tanks, um, what else, like uh, anti-air, uh, AA guns, things like that, like everything that you would need to defend your country or, or attack another country, these are the materials that is used. So oil, aluminium or, alum or aluminium um, if you're American. Um, Rubber, which we actually have a lot of, uh, chromium, uh, steel, and tungsten, and we're kind of low on oil. Now you can see that traded goods. It says here we have a total of 34 civilian factories. 15 are being used to produce consumer goods, leaving us with 19 available to trade. So we have 19 um, civilian factories that we can that are free left to trade. So if we wanted more oil, for example, we can trade with the U.S. and buy. Um, 48 oil for the price of six civilian factories, which I'm not going to do because we don't really need that yet. Um, but I will get into the trading very soon. This just means that we can craft some some more civilian factories. We can make them, and you can see that we can we can put them all around the country if we want to. So I could put a couple here. Um, now these numbers just basically means this is like the amount of building slots that you have. So it says Wales has used uh, Wales have used one out of six building slots. So if I was to, I could put five more civilian factories in this, but that means that I can, I cannot build anything else in in Wales um, anymore, which is something that I don't particularly want to do. I'm going to put two in there um, because then it's three out of six. That's, that's quite good. I'm going to put one there, one there, because these are used for trading. So I, I will need these in the future and very soon if I'm going to start creating units and things like that. So I think that's quite a few. Um, different civilian factories. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So ten more civilian factories uh, currently being worked on, which will take quite a long time to do, but they're they're being worked on. And now we have three military factories. These basically, yeah, it says you have three uh, military factories to use for producing uh, military equipment. So this will be used for inventory equipment, support equipment, tanks, um, airplanes. Uh, you got uh, the the ships, battleships, things like that. This is all what it's used for. Now, military factories are just for inventory equipment, support equipment, light tanks, um, or just tanks in general, um, and planes. And then you've got naval dockyards that are used for creating ships, of course. So that's completely separate. But this would be used for... Now, you can see we have 7 out of 14 military factories being used, and that is being used on all of these. Now... If I wanted to increase the production of inventory equipment, it's currently making 16.56 per day. I could allocate more uh, military factories to this, and basically you can see the amount goes up. If I was to hover over and add all of the military factories, it would make 82.83 inventory equipment per day, which is a lot, right? But obviously I don't have 15 military factories to, to add to that. I only have seven available, and I don't want to put them all on inventory equipment because it's just not needed. So I'm going to put one there. Probably going to put two, maybe, on support equipment. Uh, we're currently making 2.4 tanks a week. That's not too bad. Um, inventory fighters, 3.8 a month, 2.4 uh, a yeah, month. Let's add some inventory and artillery equipment. Let's see what we can use here. I'm thinking maybe to go for some other cards are used for transporting troops to and in the field. I don't particularly need many of those. Let's just allocate one of those. That's just going to make one per week. And then we'll go for maybe anti-aircraft artillery. It will shoot down hostile planes. Um, and then we've got towed artillery, which is large caliber weapons such as cannons and howitzers that are operated by crews, which, are, which can project munitions far beyond the effective range of personal weapons so basically they would just be used to to kill the enemy rather than like, rifles and things like that so i don't know which one to go for i'm thinking possibly the anti-air artillery um although we could just how many do we have we have three so let's put one let's put one on anti-air and we'll put two on towed artillery so that's our military factories completely maxed out now, once again, we can craft military factories. We can do the same like we did for civilian factories. And if we go on, is it production? No, uh, construction. We can make military factories and add a few around the country. Um, 
which wouldn't be such a bad idea, but I don't want to add too many. So we're going to add, I think, that's what, a 6 out of 8. Let's add that's 3. Let's add one more to Wales. I don't want to max any of these out because obviously I can use them in the future. We do have this land over here, but I don't think we can really put much on them, no. Could put one, really, on all of these land. I don't particularly want to do that. It might not be bad to put one in Cyprus, just because it's its its own separate island, so it's going to be difficult for, for people to attack that. Although we don't have any units there to protect it. I'm not going to put one here because that would just get wrecked. Um, in war, that would just get wrecked. So I'm not going to put one there. So let's just... Let's just head back. I think that's probably enough. We only need three more anyway. Three more is more than enough for now. Um, so now we have three dockyards, which, like I said, are the exact same thing as military factories. But it said they do um, it for ships. So they'll just make ships and whatnot. So it's not such a bad thing. Um, let's see what we can create in the dockyard. What have we got being made now? Um, destroyers. Destroyer 2. Three of them. Okay. Um, S-Class. Uh, amphibian class. Oh, no, amphibian. Wow. Amph amphian class. Um, all three of them. And that's basically it. So, let's see. Maybe we can make a convoy. Get some trading going. Um, probably a quick way to get some trading going. Let's add two to that. Then we've got three more left. So, maybe we can go for hmm, battle cruisers, battleships, submarines. Would you go for submarines? All of these are the same. I'm not quite sure what it means in terms of like the different classes. I don't really think it makes a difference. Um, but if we add one of each, just for now, it might not be such a bad thing. So all of our naval dot cards are being used, and we can add more of these if we want to. Like I said, well, like with the civilian factories and the military factories, we can add more if need be. So. That's that. Now, a national focus is a like it's like a perk tree. Okay, so you've got like all of these different things that you can unlock that could, that will give you different bonuses and things. So, um, in war and stuff like that, you get different bonuses like secure in Belgium. Um, you can, for example, here home defense it'll add eight coastal forts in different areas in the UK, which is quite good. And then you've got reinforce the empire. It will gain. It will make the uh, base national unity uh, gain by ten percent. Which base national unity is basically the amount of the country they'd have to take out or take over in order for for us to to surrender. So they'd have to take out Plymouth. You can see that um, in, if they were to take over Plymouth, it would give them ten victory points. If they're to take over London, it would give them fifty victory points because obviously London's the capital. So they'd have to take out 75% of the country in order for them to to make us uh, surrender. So obviously the, if we increase that, if we research that, then that will increase it by 10% and therefore it would be 85%. So they'd have to take out yet more of the country. So there is that, um, which will give obviously loads of bonuses and things like that. Army experience, um, it'll open up the ability to go all the way down to like war with Italy and stuff like that. Um, develop New Zealand, air defenses, influence China, war with Japan. Um, loads of these different things that just give you a bunch of bonuses. And then there's this one here that will add four civilian factories um, in different parts of the UK. Or maybe? I don't know. Maybe it'll do it in different parts of some of the places that we already own. Um, and then there's a bomb as well, but I can't go for this one because we're not at war with Germany and Poland is not in a faction with, uh, Poland, wait, Poland is not in a faction with Germany. Can we click this? No. Oh, so Poland is in a faction with Germany. So in order for us to be able to research this, we could either be at war with Germany or Poland would not have to be in a faction with Germany. Um, so, really, it's only the civilian buildings and reinforcing that we could really go for. Coastal forts, I don't really think is a is a big thing at this point, although it would be quite useful. Um, but I'd probably go, I'm probably going to go with reinforcing the Empire for now. Um, 
That seems like a good thing. And then no template. That's just because we have... I think we're building submarines. We don't actually have templates for those. Um, so we could do that in the future. Or we could just stop creating them and, and get rid of that. Low manpower. Now this, I'm not quite sure how we get over this. Because I'm not sure how you gain manpower. Um, if any of you guys know in the comments. Uh, or know. And you can let me know in the comments. That will be absolutely great. Um, because I'll get that going for the next episode. If there is a next episode. If you guys want to see more. So yeah. So that's that. Um, because obviously low manpower. Then uh, kind of. It stops the ability for, for us to to increase our army. And stuff like that. So obviously the more manpower we have the better. Like Germany have like a one. Uh, like a one million manpower or something. We have 58k. So you know it's not great. We have 517k in total, um, but we have 58k free, um, whereas Germany would have a ton of manpower. It won't tell us. Um, but yeah, so there's Hitler. Now, eventually, we could improve the relations with, with Germany, which could be quite good. Um, we could start befriending Germany. Um... But I'm not really sure if we want to do that. Maybe we just want to go against Germany. Um, and then insufficient resources. That means in order to to build the equipment that we currently have in production, we actually have insufficient resources. Which you can see, these are like they're not grayed out, but they're they're red, right? Because that's because we don't have the oil that we need in order to craft those. Now that doesn't mean they will stop crafting altogether. That just means they're going to take a hell of a lot longer to to actually produce. Right, so in order to do that, like I said, we're probably going to need to. Um, that would mean that we need to trade. And I think it was oil. Let's just make sure. Yeah, it was oil. So we're going to need to trade some oil. And the person and the country in the world that has the most oil to trade is the US. So let's go ahead and do that. So we need eight, um, which will cost one civilian factory. But I'm going to bump it up by one more, um, which will give us 16 for two civilian factories. So I'm going to go ahead and send that. So that means we now are using two out of 19 uh, civilian factories. So we only have 17 left. But that's quite a lot. So And we don't really need anything else at this point. So we have quite a bit. And we also have some more being crafted or, um, and produced and whatnot and built. So that's not that bad. So that would eventually uh, come over to us and we can start using the oil all the way from the, uh, the US of A. And yeah, so that's basically all I'm going to do for this episode. Um, just to get things started, give you like a brief overview of the game. All I really know about the game from this point on, uh, from this point on, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with the UK um, because I've never been really in this. I've never played as the UK. I've normally just played as Germany or Italy because Italy start in war with Ethiopia, and Italy is the the country that they put you with in the tutorial. So <laughs> yeah, that's basically it. But Hopefully you guys have enjoyed. If you have, please do go ahead, hit the like button, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, Facebook, all the good stuff. Like I said, let me know on the different things. If you have any tips on the uh, on this game, on how to get more manpower, etc. 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 Alright? Let me know in the comment section below. As always, thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you in tomorrow's video, guys. Take care.